Yes, I currently work as the Executive Secretary of the South Pacific Regional Fisheries Management Organization, in short, SPRIFMA. And I am involved in the conservation and management of high seas fishery resources in the South Pacific Ocean. So caring for oceans uh, comes uh, as part of my job, of course, but actually uh, oceans have played a, a very important role in my life uh, since early on. I grew up in, in Valparaíso at the shores of the Pacific uh, in Chile and my father was a marine biologist. Uh, also through my academic training as a fish biologist I gained a deep appreciation of the uh, importance that the oceans play for the existence of life on Earth. Uh, the well-being of these water bodies um, that uh, cover almost three quarters of Earth's surface uh, will be crucial for all our survival. Uh, yes, um, I would say in, in no particular order um, that the main challenges or threats uh, could be uh, pollution, uh, climate change, and uh, of course uh, overfishing. Yeah, um, marine pollution is a direct effect of so many human activities and not just those carried out at sea but also to a very large degree of activities that take place on land. Eutrophication, harmful chemicals and marine debris such as non-degradable plastics all of this has been ongoing uh, uh, on a large scale for many decades and the cumulative effects are a serious threat for marine life. Uh, climate change also has a profound impact on the oceans. We can already see physical and biological uh, changes such as rising seawater levels, um, seawater acidification, uh, changes to the big ocean currents, uh, irreversible destruction of coral reefs and displacement of fish populations. And uh, finally, regarding overfishing, I would like to, to, to point out that, that, that until the 1970s, or so, it was generally believed that uh, marine fish were so plentiful that uh, they could not be overfished. Uh, only after the disastrous decline of important fisheries such as that of Atlantic cod, it became clear that uh, the marine resources are not endless and that action was urgently needed. So the good news are that um, since then, significant progress could be made in this regard and important uh, international re legislation has been adopted by almost all coastal states. Uh, for example, the UN Law of the Seas and Associated Fish Stock Agreement and the FIO Code of Conduct for Responsible Fisheries, just to name a few. Uh, still much more action is needed and uh, uh, we are all collaborating uh, to ensure the uh, sustainability of ocean resources. Uh, uh, SPRIPO is a new organization and it is in, in the process of setting up its fisheries management, uh, management regime. Uh, this is not an easy undertaking, in, in particular when considering the enormous size of the Sprifma Convention area, uh, covering about a quarter of all high seas area, areas in the world. Uh, our members are very committed to the implementation of Sprifma's objective, uh, which is to ensure the sustainable use and long-term conservation of fishery resources through the application of the precautionary approach and of the ecosystem approach to fisheries management. Uh, 
uh, I believe that the fight against uh, illegal, unregulated and unreported fisheries, IUU fishing, uh, will uh, be an important challenge for the organization in the coming year. Um, the SPRIFMO already has quite a few regulations to address uh, IUU fishing, for example, uh, a blacklist for IUU vessels and it is currently in the process of developing a vessel monitoring scheme which will further contribute to the uh, to the to the to deterring illegal fishing in the South Pacific. Um, well, uh, allow me to say that, that, that apart from the uh, actions needed on global and regional uh, levels to address uh, climate change and high seas fisheries, I, I believe actually that uh, the coastal development and initiatives by coastal communities will be of a key importance for achieving healthy marine environments and sustainable mar uh, resource use. Um, the, the, the large majority of fishery catches occurs near the shores and as mentioned before marine pollution is largely caused by coastal activities. Yes, these are very good, uh, but, but also very general goals, and I think it will require a, a, a large commitment and a really effective uh, collaboration uh, between states to ensure that the necessary actions are taken so that these goals can be met in the time frames envisaged. Well, let me say that in general I do believe that marine protected areas can be a valuable tool for ensuring the conservation of ocean habitats and marine life. However, I would like to caution that even if you closed all of the high seas to fishing, you might find that it does not have the desired effects on the oceans. Most high seas fisheries are pelagic and move around. Uh, so they are not confined to the high seas. Also the impact of pelagic fisheries on marine habitats is low, in particular if methods are used to minimize bycatch. It makes sense to close vulnerable habitats in the high seas, for, which are often found on seamounts. And most of these are already closed in the South Pacific. So although of economic importance, um, it's important to note that high sea catches comprise less than 5% of all global catches in the sea. And I cannot stress enough that the future of the well-being of the oceans will depend on a large extent on coastal management. Such management, however, cannot consist in simply closing coastal areas. That sounds nice and easy, but actually it's very hard to monitor and control, in particular if the local population is not on board. Um, the implementation of an ecosystem approach to fisheries management, in my view, is a much better solution. Uh, it heavily involves stakeholders, making it much more likely to succeed than any top-down approach can. Uh, I, I am very much in favor of community-based fisheries management and, and also of encouraging cultural diversity. Uh, I believe that both cultural and biological diversity increase resilience and thus our chances of survival. And nonetheless, uh, we have to uh, keep in mind that, that not all traditional cultures always lived in perfect harmony with the environment 
and we m must look at, the, at them on a case-by-case -case basis. Personally, I, I really hope that, that the oceans may endure with all the wonderful and strange uh, creatures uh, they contain, that the ocean may continue to provide us with important ecological uh, services and food, and that uh, humans may start treating the oceans with the respect, appreciation and understanding they deserve. Um, without the oceans, uh, we will not survive. Thank you. It was my pleasure.